The Bible says they were there in Nazareth. But what happened, the Bible says, that all of a sudden uh, you had the leader, the king. You had uh, Alexandria, who decided, uh, Caesar, I'm sorry, Augustus, Caesar Augustus, who decided that he wanted to tax all of the people. So therefore, he used that, God I'm talking about, used taxation to force Mary and Joseph into Bethlehem. He was working out his own plan, Bishop, because he already sent word that the Son of God was to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. And although when you look at the history of Judah at that time, or Judea at that time, you would see a couple of things that were going on. Yes, it appeared that the scepter had already gone because you had a pagan leader who did not acknowledge God. You had a leader who did not, who did not. You had a king, Herod, who did not reverence God. Somehow, the people had dropped their guard and this pagan leader had come in to lead God's people. You cannot have a pagan leader uh, uh, to lead you that don't know God if you're trying to go holy. If you want to live right, you've got to associate with people who are trying to live right. Because if you keep associating with those who are not living right, the Bible says evil communications corrupt good morals. And I'm not saying don't deal with people. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, when you, uh, you, know, when you find yourself doing things that are ungodly, watch out. So during this particular time, Judah was no longer ruled by its own princes. It was ruled by Idiom Prince, a descendant of Esau. And we know the history of Esau. It was Herod the Great. Also, the promised land was no longer in the hands of Israel. It was in the hands of a heathen power. Also, uh, as we look at it, the, the prince, the ruler, was no longer appointed by God. He was empowered by Rome. The temple was no longer cared for by the prince of God. It was misused under the authority of a usurper. Also, the priests of God were no longer the ministers of God. They were the servants of a secular world. I refuse to be the servant of a secular world. I want to be a servant of the Lord. As we're ministering, as we're serving, we are to serve God and not try to please the secular world. And so notice how God uh, continues his plan for this son to come forth. They're forced into Bethlehem, Judea. And the Bible says that, that Mary was really ready to have this child. When, uh, when the word came, listen to exactly how this word from heaven comes. The Bible says these angels show up on the scene to speak to non-religious shepherds. Shepherds who did not worship the Lord, shepherds who did not acknowledge the Lord, and as a matter of fact, shepherds were uh, sort of taught as, uh, they, were, they were sort of seen rather, as people who were not really uh, religious because they were always tending the flock and did not have time to keep the laws. They did not have time. Is it too much history? Is it too much history for you? Uh, you need to know it. You know, you know they, they didn't have time. They did not have time to tend, you know, to tend to the religious orders that were set and, and the religious rules and the rituals. They were making sure that the flock was okay. So they were thought. But here God designs a plan. He says, what I want you to do, I want you to go to the shepherds and I want you to send the first message uh, to the shepherds that uh, things are ju just about ready to turn around. Can I, para can I paraphrase that? They're just about, tell the shepherds because I need to convince these shepherds that he is the Messiah. They had heard the news. It's one thing to hear of the good news, but it's another to make the news applicable in your life. A lot of people believe in God, but they don't serve God. A lot of people will do for God if he's doing for them, but, you know, you know, if he decides you don't need this, then they will not do. Nevertheless, he tells these shepherds that uh, don't be afraid. Everything is turning around. My son is on his way. Now, listen, he uses shepherds uh, to tell the good news. The Bible says that uh, when those angels showed up, all of a sudden, 
this heavenly host appeared so that the angel, so that the shepherds could see these angels rejoicing. Now, it is not totally clear how they saw them, but God knows how to give you a vision while you're standing there. Ask those that were at the Mount of Transfiguration. Not only a vision, they literally saw what happened on the Mountain of Transfiguration. But they saw these angels praising the Lord and, you know, uh, talking about, you know, this Christ, that he was the highest and he's, he, he's, he's on his way. So after the angels left, told the shepherds, now go tell the good news. The Bible says they went back telling the good news of this shepherd that was on his way. Now, well, actually before that, they went, as the angels said. He said, now there's a sign. You're going to see this baby. You'll know. You're going to see this baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. You, you're going to see, this is going to be the sign that you know that this is the child. And they went to see exactly, uh, they saw exactly what the angel said after. They saw what the angel said. That it is said that they left and spread the news abroad. Isn't it something sometimes when you're excited about your God and other people are not excited about your God? You know, God comes into your life. You have this phenomenal experience with the Lord. You go and share it with others and everybody looks at you like, yeah, okay, right. And so it's amazing how sometimes it can kind of cut you a little bit, but you've got to keep on rejoicing because that's good news when God can show you something that he didn't show anybody else. But when he shows you that, he tells you to go spread the good news to others whether they will hear you or not. And so the Bible said, yes, there were some that didn't believe, but Mary pondered these things in her heart. Here we are again with God's divine plan. They were looking for him to come through a dynasty, through rich folk. He did not choose rich folk. He chose those shepherds and he chose poor people. He chose Mary and Joseph. Mary did not have the doves. Mary presented this offering before God. He chose poor people. That's good news. He chose me. I was not qualified, but he chose me. He chose Mary, a humble young woman who was a Gentile believer, to bring forth the Son of God. That's good news. God wants you to give birth. I don't care who you are. Because when he puts something in your spirit in ministry, you need to give birth in ministry where it really belongs. Amen? And so the Bible says that they evidenced what God said in terms of what was going to happen down through the prophets. Good news, things are going to turn around. I've come to bring you tidings of good joy. And of course, the baby was born. And I've come to tell you this morning, that's good news to me. That's great news to me. It was great news to the shepherd. And of course, as we celebrate this Christmas holiday season, I want you to understand that Christ is coming back. I cannot say that enough. I don't want anyone. He came, first of all, to redeem us. I can't say it enough. From all of our sins, not just us, but those who will receive salvation into uh, their lives. And so the Bible says that, interestingly enough, after this child was born, the Bible says that it was 40 days of purification, which Mary could not be seen and she could not be in the public. But the Bible says that they took that child and sacrificed, made sacrifices for that child and dedicated their child back to the very God that gave them. Now, people said, why, why, would he, why would he need to be, why would, we, why would he need a sacrifice when he, he was coming to be the sacrifice? Well, he had to go through the earthly things, you know, being divine to prove to earthly men of who he was. And so he had to go through the sacrifices and his right to follow rules and regulations, especially when you know the rule has been set that you will not be a stumbling block. Remember, this is what Timothy said in terms of circumcision. He says, listen, hey, listen, so what? You know, this, listen, this is the law you require, it, but my soul salvation is more important. Christ didn't come to do away with the law, and he made that very, very clear, but I came to fulfill the law. So we're here today. It's good news from heaven that things have changed now. Things are not like they used to be. Uh, 
He wanted them to know that. But look at society today and look at how it is. You have leaders who think that they're in charge and God has to send a savior to show them that they're not in charge. And so he sent that scepter. The scepter was Jesus Christ. That's the good news. And the good news is that he has come, but he's coming back as king to reign forever and ever and ever. And so as we celebrate this Christmas holiday, it's good news from heaven. Christ our Savior, he is born. He's, he was not only born in a manger, but he's born in our lives. He's born in every situation. If you would allow him to take control of your life, it's good news from heaven. It was and it is now. Because God is going to send his son to come back for you and I. But I wonder how many of us are really prepared. Because if you really look for at the text, when they went to the inn, there was no room. They ignored the history. And let me tell you something. You've heard things. They ignored the history. They missed an opportunity to know the Christ, the baby. And so they did not have room at the inn. And as the word was being spread, uh, there were others that missed that opportunity. Unfortunately, today, there are many that will miss the opportunity to know Christ. Why? Because they're not in tune. One. Two, because they are not listening. Three, because they're not serving the Lord. I admonish you. There is news, welcoming news coming from heaven for you and I and we are to be prepared the son of God Jesus Christ the Christo the anointed one is on his way back don't you folly don't you fool around and miss this opportunity to know Christ on earth don't miss this opportunity to serve the Lord on earth. It's good news to me. I don't know about you. It's welcoming news to me to know that God has sent his son he who's going to clean up this earth, who's going to straighten out all wrong, who's going to make all wrong right. It's good news. It's good news to me. And I believe every believer, every believer, it should be good news. It's welcoming news to know that this son was born uh, to save all mankind from their sins. The history around, it was hard times. The saints of God could not worship and preachers, priests had begun to compromise their values. They began to do what the people wanted. Uh, they had lost their connection with the Lord because of this Roman rule, which when you study the history, you see it was a powerful rule. And many lost their lives doing this rule. And so this season of Advent, um, let's remember, this is welcoming news. And it continues to remind us, remind us, of who Christ is. And I believe, as the scripture says, the poor you will always have with you. There is reasoning why Christ, God allowed Christ to come through those settings so that a lot of us could identify, that we could identify that God does what he wants to, with whom he wants to, Whenever he wants to do it, we do not regulate his plan. He does. He can change it when he wants to, at whatever time he wants to change it. And that's why we are to always acknowledge him with whatever we do. And so it's powerful. 
It's a powerful lesson, but we can identify. Because if we had to bring all the riches, we would have never made it. Some of us, maybe some of you. We would, we would have never made it. And if we would have looked for approval from man, we would have never made it. And so today, that's welcoming news to me. That Christ the Savior has come. And he is coming. He is still alive. If you're here today and don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, I want you to come. Don't miss this opportunity to know Christ. He will grow you where you need, where you need to grow. He'll take you where you need to go in him. As we celebrate, I'll share this and I'll take my seat. You know, I remember the times, and I'll share this. Ooh. And I'll be cautious how I say this. When we were children, growing up with my grandmother, and I'm going to reveal my unnickness, okay? If you, know, don't, don't, if you can't tell it right, don't tell it, okay? We, I, I believe my granny did the best she could. But I remember her lifestyle, I put it that way. And we were young children and we heard about Christmas. But there were many Christmases that we missed uh, because of circumstances and situations. And so, I always said to myself, and of course, I don't, want, I don't want my children to think, I didn't want my children to think it was just about gifts or anything like that. I really wanted them to know that it was because of the Christ. But I always said to myself when uh, I became a woman, I wanted something better for my children. And so, I remember, and I'm just going, I remember, I started this job, and I was a teenager, a young woman. I started this job. I remember when I got my first paycheck, I felt I was rich. It wasn't a lot of money. But what I did, I, I just wanted my children to have a good Christmas. And I wanted them to always know that it's okay. That, this is the way I like to take care of people, even in the church, so don't be surprised what I do. It was not always easy, but I wanted them to have better. And while we're giving better to our children, teach them the right way. Don't let them be little spoiled brats. And fuss if they don't get what they want. Give them what you can afford. Let them know that it's his birthday. And if they want to, they can bring him a gift themselves. But God blessed over time. And we're grateful.